secular analysis. I am a Christian, but I don't let that be a rose-colored darkly, uh, though it really gives me discernment. I look at things just coldly and analyze the history. And then I emotionally rally people to fight against it. But uh, it is very, very real. So we appreciate uh, Mark uh, Crutcher for coming on the show and for producing this film. Mark, good to have you here. Thank you, sir. Thanks for having me on. You bet. So so tell us about your journey, your your organization, what you do generally, and how it led you deeper down the rabbit hole to really the fount of this uh, Planned Parenthood evil. Well, we, um, we're we a pro-life organization, as you know, and we do a lot of different pro-life things. We do a lot of undercover work. You may have uh, be familiar with some of our work exposing the trafficking of ba baby body parts, how the abortion clinics chop up the babies they they kill and sell them for parts. Yes, I want to talk about all that. And I want to, I'm, many times, but to have you on, and for some reason, it, it, it never happened. So this is hopefully the first of many interviews. Yeah, tell us all about it. Well, and th th that's it. I mean, it, that's a whole show by itself. But basically, uh, that's enough. For another profit center for the abortion lobby is to is to chop up these babies and sell them for spare parts. And uh, it's a it's a fairly profitable endeavor that they've got going. We have no idea how large it is. We know it's still going on. We were undercover in an abortion clinic in um, Overland Park, Kansas, for 31 months and came out with all the documentation on it. The, they actually put out brochures, just like you get on a new car or something, uh, talking about how they sell the, the body parts. And uh, Then we also did an undercover investigation on the fact that Planned Parenthood is running a nationwide pedophile protection racket. They're, they're protecting the men who, who sexually abuse and rape children. And we proved it, and I'll say it right here on your show, they're running a nationwide pedophile protection racket. If that's not true, that's libel and slander on its face, and they would have sued me the first time I said it seven years ago. I've said it on over 200 national and local television and radio stations. They've never even once contacted me. Now, for those that don't know, I, I should have read your bio for people, but it's so lengthy. You're on syndicated radio, TV. I mean, you reach millions of people every week. Uh, you might tell folks how big your ministry is, and they just back off and shut up. And see, I never knew this stuff either, but over the decades, that's what I find, found out. Devil-worshipping pedophiles basically run the New World Order, the global government, and they love death, and they love killing babies. But uh, yeah, uh, please continue. So yeah. body parts, pedophile rings, uh, black genocide, yes. Yeah, now, uh, one of the things that those of us in the pro-life movement have always known is that there was a strong racial element to the motivation behind uh, the legalization of abortion. And so about three years ago, we launched an investigation into this, and... Um, uh, what we have found, I mean, I've been in the pro-life battle for 30 years. I've been working on it, working in it full-time for 23 years. And, and, Alex, I've learned things in the last three years that I never dreamed of. I work in this 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And the stuff that we've learned in the last three years is mind-boggling. And it, it is absolutely undeniable now that racism was a was a primary motivation, if not the primary motivation. Matter of fact, I would go so far as to say it was the primary motivation for the legalization of abortion to begin with. And what we did is we went back and, and as you've seen in the in the D V D, we actually start at the at the time prior to the end of slavery, when not all white people and not even all wealthy white people, but a certain select group of super wealthy white elitist began to wonder what was going to happen, or actually worry about what was going to happen when the end of slavery came, because they saw it was coming. And we're talking about in the late 1700s, early 1800s, and up until the mid-1800s, these people clearly saw that the end of slavery was, was going to occur one day. They didn't know when, but they were very alarmed at what was going to happen. And not from the standpoint of insurrection, which is what a lot of people talk about, the wealthy elite can always insulate themselves from insurrection. That's not their problem. What they were concerned about is the economic impact. For the most part, these are the people, this wealthy elite, this small cadre of wealthy elitists, were the people who had most profit from slavery. They had made billions on the backs of Africans that they had brought in here from, Af from Africa. And, and it had been Christians that ended that, just like Christians are going to end their murder of babies again, but go ahead. Absolutely. But um, they began to wonder what the economic impact was, was going to be of releasing 4 million people into the economy that they had kept artificially ignorant and, un and unemployable. Basically, uh, if, 
you were black in the 1830s and you were set free, you only had one job skill, and that was to work on the cotton plantation. So what was going to be the impact of this is what concerned them, and their first idea was to uh, was what's called colonization. They were going to just send all the slaves back to Africa. That failed miserably, even though it was widely embraced in our government. The United States Congress, what most people don't know, is the United States Congress actually funded the American uh, Colonization Society. So it was a very seriously took taken uh, concept. It just didn't work. And it's, it's interesting when you start studying these things, Alex. You know, if you put things on a timeline, which is how we started this, we did it like a criminal investigation. We put things on a timeline starting in, like in the early 1800s and continuing up to 2009. And one of the things that you see is every time this, this small group of elitists tried something and it didn't work, all of a sudden there was something else to try. And it's interesting that when colonization failed, it's exactly the same moment when there was a new philosophy introduced in the world called eugenics. No. The man who uh, actually coined the term eugenics, or the word eugenics, um, is now today called the father of eugenics. Um, and he, his name was Francis Galton. His family was extraordinarily wealthy. They had made their money from the slave trade. Um, and he came up with this, with this philosophy called eugenics. And basically what it is is, not, is is absolutely no different than what Hitler did, is the, the creation of the master race. And he thought that the world could um, manipulate the, the human condition to the point that we could be better, than, we could do a better job than what God did. They're, basically their theory was God did, God did well as far as he went, but we can make it better. And they really believed this. The Galtons and the Darwins and others were all intermarried. And they have like nine kids, and eight of them would die, and the other one would be retarded. Right. And they and and they still thought though this was genius and beauty. So they they really believed that 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 they were creating a new super race. Absolutely. And and one of the things, and, and I know who I knew who Darwin was, and I knew who Galton was uh, before we even started this project. What I didn't know is that they were first cousins. Charles Darwin and, and Francis Galton were first cousins. And they work together on these projects. And what you start to see as you start unraveling all of this is that basically Darwin was the philosopher and Galton was the guy who put all this stuff into practice. He was called the bulldog. Right. Uh, Galton, I mean, sorry, uh, the, the, the eugenicists first started out with a plan they, that was basically what you might call passive eugenics. They believed that not only were Africans... Uh, inferior intellectually to whites, they believed they were in, inferior physically as well, and that unless they had direction from the white community, they couldn't survive. They couldn't live without us. So, so they set up the social welfare net and racial hygiene health departments, and that's our CPS and Planned Parenthood today. That's Please what continue. it evolved into. That's mm -hmm. what it evolved into. And what we do is we take everything on a step by step basis, and we connect the dots from the failure of colonization to the success of abortion. And we show all the stages that these people went through, from passive eugenics to positive eugenics to negative eugenics to birth control to sterilization and ultimately to abortion. And it's when you start putting this thing on a timeline, you keep seeing all these things pop up where X fails, and exactly on that time, here's this new strategy. And when that failed, here's this new strategy. And they kept doing that until they came up with one that worked, which was abortion. Now, in the and we document uh, of things in this video I don't think most people understand or don't know. I certainly didn't know. The eugenics, eugenics movement had really settled on the idea of forced sterilization mm -hmm. as the way they would control the world's population. 34 states had passed that. Yes, 30, over 30 states had actual eugenics boards, uh, state eugenics boards. 30, over 30 states had them. The first one was in Indiana. And this is not something that happened just back in the 1910s or the 1920s. No, this went on to the 80s. Amazing film. Right. It covers it all. It, it, it takes a snapshot that's in Endgame and blows it way up in full stunning detail. You know somebody who's black who thinks Planned Parenthood loves them and Obama loves them when he, by the way, doubled the funding for Africa for this stuff? You need to find out the truth. You need to get this film at InfoWars.com. We'll also give you the